Ukraine and Russia are engaged in preliminary negotiations to halt strikes on each other's energy infrastructure. However, Russian President Vladimir Putin is unlikely to agree to a deal as long as Ukrainian forces remain on Russian territory in the Kursk region, reports the Financial Times. Kyiv seeks to revive negotiations mediated by Qatar, which came closer to an agreement in August, but were derailed by Ukraine's incursion into Kursk, sources including senior officials reported. There's very early talks about potentially restarting something. There's now talks on the energy facilities, said a diplomat informed about the negotiations. According to the official, Moscow and Kyiv have already reduced the frequency of attacks on each other's energy infrastructure in recent weeks as part of an arrangement reached by their intelligence agencies. However, according to a former senior Kremlin official, Putin is unlikely to agree to a deal until Russian forces drive Ukrainian troops out of the Kursk region, where they still control about 600 square kilometers of territory. Meanwhile, Ukraine plans to continue striking targets in Russia, including oil refineries, to exert pressure on Russia during negotiations. The Financial Times reports that the Kursk operation caused Moscow to withdraw from the previous round of negotiations in August, when officials were beginning to plan an in-person meeting in Doha. Qatar began acting as a mediator in these talks in June, following a summit in Switzerland, to which Russia was not invited. Four Ukrainian officials told the Financial Times that last autumn, Kiev and Moscow reached a tacit agreement not to strike each other's energy facilities. As a result, Russia refrained from large-scale attacks on Ukrainian energy infrastructure that winter. This agreement was meant to pave the way for an official deal, the sources said. However, Kiev resumed drone attacks on Russian oil facilities in February and March of this year, aiming to increase pressure on Moscow after the failed 2023 counter-offensive. Despite warnings from the White House to cease strikes, Kiev continued its offensive and Moscow concluded that the tacit agreement had been breached, sources told journalists. Subsequently, Russia escalated the situation by launching volleys of long-range missiles targeting power plants across Ukraine, including the Tripilska thermal power plant located 40 kilometers from Kiev, which was completely destroyed. According to the Financial Times, as part of the Ukrainian campaign that began in early 2024, at least nine of Russia's 32 largest oil refineries have been damaged. According to the latest survey from the Razumkov Center, the number of Ukrainians supporting peace negotiations with Russia has increased over the past year. However, they are still far from a majority. The Office of the President has outlined the main condition for commencing negotiations with Russia, the withdrawal of hostile troops to their positions as of February the 24th, 2022. Israeli Chief of Staff Lt. Gen. Herzi Halavai said on Tuesday that his country will once again know how to reach Iran if Tehran were to launch another missile barrage at Israel. If Iran makes the mistake of launching another missile barrage at Israel, we will once again know how to reach Iran with capabilities that we did not even use this time, he said. Halavai made the remarks while visiting the squadrons that took part in the strike on Iran at the Ramon Air Base. Israel attacked military targets in Iran with pre-dawn airstrikes on Saturday in retaliation for the barrage of ballistic missiles the Islamic Republic fired on Israel earlier this month. It was the first time Israel's military has openly attacked Iran. The Israeli military said its aircraft targeted facilities that Iran used to make the missiles fired at Israel as well as surface-to-air missile sites. How Iran chooses to respond to the unusually public Israeli airstrikes could determine whether the region spirals further toward all-out war or holds steady at an already devastating and destabilizing level of violence. In the coldly calculating realm of Middle East geopolitics, a strike of the kind that Israel delivered before dawn Saturday would typically be met with a forceful response. Doing so would allow Iran's clerical leadership to show strength not only its own citizens but also to Hamas in Gaza and Lebanon's Hezbollah, the militant groups battling Israel. Analysts say Tehran may opt to hold back for now. In Iran, you will do it again and you will do it again and you will do it again. 
אנחנו נדע עוד פעם להגיע לאיראן, להגיע אפילו עם יכולות שלא השתמשנו בהן בפעם הזו, ולפגוע מאוד מאוד קשה גם ביכולות וגם במקומות שהפעם עוד השארנו בצד. עשינו את זה מסיבה מאוד פשוטה, שיכול להיות שאנחנו נידרש לזה עוד פעם. לא סיימנו את האירוע הזה, אנחנו ממש במהלכו. ואנחנו עכשיו מסתכלים קדימה. מסתכלים קדימה ואומרים דבר מאוד פשוט, אני אומר את זה לכם. אנחנו במוכנות מאוד גבוהה בכל הגזרות. נלחמים בלבנון, נלחמים בעזה, נלחמים בטרור ביהודה ושומרון ובעוד זירות רחוקות. Israel destroyed three remaining Russian S-300 air defense systems in Iran during airstrikes on military targets in Iran last Saturday, the Wall Street Journal reported, citing American and Israeli officials. The systems, a key component of Iran's air defense system, were able to intercept, according to the newspaper, at best a few of the hundreds of missiles fired at targets in Iran during the air attack, in which 100 Israeli warplanes took part. Three of the four systems supplied by Russia to Iran were destroyed during the attack. The fourth had been destroyed earlier. According to the U.S. Institute for the Study of War, one of the S-300 systems was located near the Tehran airport, while the other two were covering energy infrastructure facilities, an oil port, an oil refinery and a natural gas field. The S-300 air defense missile systems, which were in service with Iran, are a modernized version of this system, which entered service with the Soviet Army in the late 1970s, in the late 1990s. According to analysts, the loss of the S-300 systems leaves many of Iran's critical facilities defenseless against missile attacks. It has no opportunity to obtain more modern S-400 air defense systems from Russia, since it is using all of its available reserves to conduct combat operations in Ukraine. As the Wall Street Journal points out, this episode, coupled with the destruction of several Russian S-300 systems by the Ukrainian army during the fighting in Ukraine and successful Ukrainian strikes against more modern Russian S-400 air defense systems, is causing serious damage to the reputation of the Russian defense industry. It cites analysts who say that traditional clients of the Russian military-industrial complex will most likely start looking for alternative arms suppliers, which could benefit South Korean, Israeli, American and Chinese arms manufacturers.